I'm back. Did you miss me? I missed you too. Debian has just released their latest iteration, Debian Bookworm, a few weeks ago. And I figure, let's download it and let's install it and let's do the very first things you typically do when you install the new operating system. So we get a feeling for it. We get a feeling what has changed and what has not changed. Shall we? Let's get into it. Hi, I'm Carsten with OpenTech and while you are here, don't forget to like, to subscribe and to hit the notification bell since it helps. And now let's download Debian and see if there is any change at all. The first thing we want to do is download Debian. So let's head over to debian.org and click the big, huge black download button. Now we are presented with that awesomely looking page and we just check for Debian 12.1.0 AMD64 netinst.iso. That is exactly what we want to download. So we click on that and then we just start to download and depending on your download speeds, it might take a few seconds. We have downloaded everything and I chose to install it this time in a virtual machine. I prepared everything. I have assigned eight vCPUs. I have created a disk with 60 gigabytes of storage space. I have assigned eight gigabytes of RAM. We just click begin installation and now the virtual machine is going to be created. It has nothing to do with Debian. It's just what we want to do. Let's switch to full screen and then let's execute graphical install. Now takes a very few seconds and then we can select the language. We want to go with English in this case. My location is always other because I'm based in Europe and specifically in Germany. I know you cannot hear that from my accent. I'm pretty sure about that. Locale can be United States, but the key map to be used is definitely German because it would not make sense otherwise with my keyboard. Next thing we want to do is enter the host name. Debian is fine for our intents and purposes. We don't give it a domain name here. And we now define the root user's password. And now I create a new user. I call it user OpenTech. Therefore, the username will be OpenTech as well. Now I assign that user a password as well. Hit continue. And then we already approach the disk partitioning screen. Here I go with guided, use entire disk. I go with the virtual disk and all I want to do is have all files in one partition. But I would recommend for an actually production use case to go at least with a separate home partition. We are fine with that. So we want the system to write the changes to the disk. And now we have to wait for a few seconds. While waiting, you could typically drink a tea or if you are a moron like me, you have to live with your empty glass. Once the base system has been extracted and already installed, we could now install another media device. But why should we do that? So we go with no and continue. And now we can and we have to configure the package manager. It typically selects the location that you entered initially, but you could change it here. But I obviously go with Germany and select one of the entries here from the list. And I'm perfectly fine with dep.debian.org. I don't have any HTTP proxy. And now the system is configuring APT Debian's package manager. So next thing is to participate in the popularity contest. Obviously, no, why should we do that? But now we come to an interesting part and I like that a lot 
with DBM. The task cell tool will pop up and will allow you to select a desktop environment. Since I don't want to install a server environment and instead go with a desktop environment, I obviously leave Debian desktop environment with GNOME, which is, by the way, my preferred desktop environment checked, but you could also check any other option to your liking. I typically also check SSH server, so I would be able to access the system remotely. I hit continue, and now the desktop environment is going to be installed. That takes another few minutes. <gasps> Ooh. Ha. Ha. Ooh. Ah, it's done. It has installed the desktop environment. Awesome. So now let's do the last thing and install the bootloader. Debian is still using grub, so we obviously want to install the grub bootloader to our primary drive and we select our hard drive and then grub is going to be installed. After a few more seconds, probably minutes, our installation is finished. Here we go. Installation is complete. So let's boot into our new system. I'm so excited. Let's have a look. So we can now log in. And the first thing we want to do is to head over to the displays and change our resolution to be what is native to our screen. In my case, it is 1920 by 1080. Before we continue now with setting up the system, let's have a look at what we have here. We have a Debian system, obviously. It's installed in QEMU, that's fine. We have eight gigabytes of memory. It runs on my machine with a Ryzen 5, that's fine as well. And it's bookworm on Wayland virtualized. Okay, good. Then let's do the very first thing and execute the welcome wizard. I now hit next because I go with English and United States. My keyboard layout is German, which is fine with me. I allow location services, that's okay. If I had any online accounts such as Nextcloud or Google, I would add them now. And now I can start using Debian GNU Linux. Okay, then let's have a look at what we have on our system. So it comes with a pretty basic selection of software already installed, contacts, weather clock. We have a few games here. We have the maps application calculator, which is fine. We ha obviously have a terminal. We have a few more games and we have LibreOffice already installed, which is quite good. More games, even more games. And that is basically it. Fine with me. So what we do now is we install my favorite, which is NeoFetch. sudo apt install neofetch minus y. Let's run it. And yeah, that looks pretty professional. And now let's do one more thing. Let's use LibreOffice and let's check the version here. It is LibreOffice version 7.4. I guess that's pretty recent. The last thing we want to do is we want to check the consumption of the system. So what we do now is we reboot the system and then after our Debian is back, we will install HTOP and then we check how the memory consumption and the CPU utilization looks like with a newly started system. Let's log on. Let's install htop and let's run it. What we see is fairly ordinary memory consumption, 930 megabytes out of eight gigabytes. That is fine. We have 100 tasks running. For a GNOME-based system, that looks quite good. 
less than one gigabyte of memory, fairly minimal CPU utilization and roughly 100 tasks running when you start your system. I can live with that. And frankly, that is my feeling when it comes to Debian 12 Bookworm overall. I can happily live with that. My major gripe with Debian is actually that it becomes quite old fashioned over time. With a Debian system, which is like a year or two in its life cycle, you have quite dated software, which is still secure, but it's probably not the newest and shiniest. But for a distribution that just gets the job done for pretty stable distribution, there is very few ones that are better than Debian. And that is why Debian makes such an awesome server system. And it makes an awesome system for those who just want to run a system that just works. There's one more thing which I personally love about Debian. It is one of the very few mainstream and mainline distributions, apart from the whole Arch ecosystem, which are not owned and influenced by major corporations. Debian is a community driven distribution. And as such, it is probably not the nicest and shiniest one, but it is the distribution that you should choose if you care about privacy, if you care about ownership, and if you care about supporting a community. To me, Debian is my second go to distribution, the first being Arch. But Debian is the one I always default back to when something goes wrong with my arch. Quite often is the case. So Debian 12 Bookworm, awesome distribution, takes quite a while to install, but you know, that's to be expected from a distribution that installs whole desktop environment and a bit more. And in the end, I can highly recommend you trying out Debian 12. I love it. It is stable, rock solid, unexciting, but awesome. Try it out, debian.org and while you are doing that, and as you have seen, you have quite a lot of time, don't forget to like, to subscribe, and to hit the notification bell, since it helps. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Probably not in a year. Thanks for dropping by. Ciao.